So what exactly is it about the Mitutoyo M-Plan apochromatic objectives that make them so special? That's what I'm going to tell you. I am being brought to you by my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. And everybody who's made a donation through the website, I really, really appreciate your help. We've got a lot to cover with this objective. I want to explain to you what it is and what makes it different from other microscope objectives. Why, why there really isn't anything quite like this. And I mean anything quite like this. You'll understand in a minute. And uh, tell you a few things about uh, what makes it different, what makes it special, why you need to get one, how to protect yourself from getting ripped off trying to get one of these, and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff to do with this particular microscope objective. This is a very unceremonious unboxing. If you buy one of these new, it should come to you in a box, an orange box with Mitu Toyo repeated on it a million times. We'll say light glass optics on the front because as I'll explain, this is the only place to buy these objectives. So if you open the box, there's a newspaper in in uh, another language that's full of tips and tricks on, I don't know what any of this says. Even the diagrams don't look right. Oh, they're upside down too. I'm gonna to take it out of the box. Now, these objectives, and now by these objectives, I mean apochromatic corrected objectives because of the way they are made are really, really delicate instruments. And you should not throw one of these against the wall in a fit of anger or hammer a nail into the wall for lack of a hammer. I can think of a lot of things you shouldn't do with it. What you should do with it is coddle it with great care. The best way to store these things, by the way, is upside down, so their center of gravity is near the bottom. This thing feels to me like it's pretty much unbreakable, short of a sledgehammer, and uh, it has an important message. It says, do not fall or drop. I guess that means do you are not supposed to fall and then drop this in the process. This is a 378802-6. That's the M-Plan APO uh, five times objective. It has, it has a uh, numeric aperture of 0 0.14. A 0 0.14 numeric aperture is the same thing as saying it has a nominal aperture of about f3 and it has a, an actual effective aperture when you're using it as a, a photographic lens, right at f18. So just this side of visible uh, diffraction. It's an infinity corrected microscope objective, which means to, to use it, you need to mount it on a 200 millimeter lens. And I have multiple videos about how to do that. Um, as an infinity conjugate lens, it can be used at other uh, focal lengths with other relay lenses uh, because uh, you can actually still focus an image with a different relay lens, but this is not one to do that with. The 10X you can, but this one, uh, probably not worth it. There are better ways to, to use, uh, to get two and a half times magnification than trying to use a 125 millimeter relay lens with this. Uh, but in theory, you could. Uh, let's talk about a few of the things that make this an absolute standout. And these aren't in any particular order, but the objective has a nice big image circle, but it's really not quite enough to cover the full frame sensor on my D850. Now, part of the reason for that is I use a little bit of infinity space, either 30 or 50 millimeters to try to reduce any chance of internal reflections or loss of contrast. The issue is that whenever you're using a compound lens like this with a relay lens and the objective, 
your, uh, especially if your relay lens is mounted in the forward direction, most of your sharpness is going to be at the middle. Uh, it's going to drop off towards the edges. And my preference is to use a good crop frame camera, a good APS-C camera with, with this particular lens, just because it allows you to take the sweetest sharpness, the best image quality from the center and kind of cuts out the very edges where the quality drops off. The image quality uh, is, is not exaggerating. It is the, the benchmark by which every other objective that we use in photography is measured. It's, yeah, that's a very nice objective. How does it compare to the Mitu Toyo 5X? Because that is how good this is. It's, um, by the way, it's one of a series of M-Plan. M-Plan means metallurgical. It means it's designed to be used without a cover slip um, and uh, the M is metallurgical. So it's, a, it's kind of a bright field uh, microscope objective. There's another one that uh, Mitu Toyo makes called the BD-Plan, which is a bright field, dark field. It's actually Sorry about that, this is noisy. It's actually exactly the same lens internally. The optics are exactly the same. It just has a dark field lighting channel on the inside, so it's a big old fat thing. Um, yeah, I don't have one to show you, but that's, uh, uh, that's the same lens essentially. And then they go up from here. There are all kinds of these lenses that are optimized for using with lasers, for example. They have these near infrared, near ultraviolet, ultraviolet, um, and, and they are super expensive, three, seven, ten thousand dollars $10,000 for the objective. But they're also not photographic objectives. You would never use one for photography. They are made to use with lasers so that you actually shine the laser through the objective. Uh, so it's a, it's a different tool. The next thing that makes this lens so desirable for photographers is how sharp it is. It is incredibly sharp. It has a, a resolution, meaning it can, it can separate two black bars that are two microns apart. If they're less than two microns apart, they look like one bar. But this, this objective will allow you to see when they're two microns apart, they look distinct. That's how, that's how you measure resolution with a lens, is by looking at line pairs per millimeter. Now, what that means to us and our camera is that providing we have a sensor that has a, a well-matched uh, pixel density, to what this lens is providing, we're gonna get the most out of it. And uh, the camera I use it with is a Nikon D7500, which has uh, a pixel pitch of somewhere around five, uh, five microns, 4.8 microns, I think. What that means is that from the center of one pixel to the center of the next pixel is all 4.85 microns. If this thing at the sensor, if the resolution is two microns uh, on the specimen, it's a five times objective, so that's 10 microns on the, on the camera sensor. So if it can tell when two lines are 10 microns apart on the sensor, then that will put the black edge of the line in separate pixels on a, sen on a sensor the size of the D7500, which means you'll be able to make use of all of that resolution, is what that means. And that means that the image is stupidly sharp. To put that in some context, if the, if the pixels were really big, if you had a, cam a full frame camera with six megapixels and the pixels were ginormous, the pitch would be greater than the separation between the two lines. So you might have like four line pairs in a single pixel which means you couldn't resolve the gap because your, your, your pixel density is too low to be able to appreciate how close together they are because you can see four of them at the same time. So what you'd see would be the, the averaging of the light and the dark and the light and the dark. Does that make sense? It's a bit complicated. The opposite is also true. If your pixel density was so high, 
that the pixels were super close together, then the gap between the two black bars, which is two microns or 10 microns on the sensor, might be longer than the pixel. So you might have multiple pixels <laughs> between the two lines. And if that's the case, you also have a fuzzy, less distinct border. But the Nikon D7500, the Nikon D850, and most of the modern prosumer cameras out there now have a pixel pitch perfect for this objective. Okay, so if you're anywhere around five microns, you're good to go. The chromatic and spherical aberration correction that's built into this lens is so good, there, there simply isn't any chromatic aberration. There's no fringing. There's none of that longitudinal blobby kind of chromatic aberration. There's no spherical aberration. It's a completely flat field lens. Uh, it's just remarkable that it, that it is so free from aberrations. How is that even possible? Well, it's an apochromatic lens, which means that it has been designed with the necessary elements to not only... Should I go back and explain what a chromatic aberration is? I think I, sh I should. Chromatic aberration is caused when light, white light, with all the wavelengths in it, passes through a lens. Now, as the different wavelengths of light pass through the edges of a lens, some of them will bend more than others, depending on their wavelength. The shorter wavelength, of the more energetic light bends a lot, whereas the low energy light, the infrared light, doesn't bend as much. And what happens then is if you just use a plain lens and you use it to take a photograph, then the image on your sensor had sees that separation in the wavelengths of light and you see it with fringing, green and purple fringing or red and blue fringing uh, on, uh, on sharp edges of high contrast. That's what chromatic aberration looks like. It's not the only kind. There's longitudinal, which is a bit harder to explain, but the point is it's a normal thing with lenses. Lenses produce this aberration not because they're, they're broken, but because that's what lenses do. So if you think about the light as it comes through the lens, the light that's in focus is going to come to an absolute point dot on the sensor. The stuff that is either over-focused or under-focused is going to come to a point in front or behind the sensor, which is going to lead to blur of the light of, of the image, blurring of the image, but also because it's of a specific wavelength, that blurring will have color. And that's what fringing is. It is blur of a particular color caused by your lens. Now, good lenses like the Nikon CFI Plan Acromat corrects for that weirdness in the light bending. And what it does is it takes the red and the blue wavelengths of light and focuses them right on the sensor. So you don't have the red blue fringing because you've nailed them. But what it doesn't do is anything to the wavelengths of light in the middle, the yellow green light. If you want to correct that too, you have to add a lot of other elements. You have to, you have to build something like this. This metal tube is packed with high-end glass and glass-like materials specifically for the purpose of removing all of that chromatic aberration. In addition, this thing corrects uh, the spherical aberration in two wavelengths, and it corrects the um, uh, for infinity, uh, which is the other thing it has to do. It has to produce a flux of light out of the back, so it, it corrects for infinity in all the visible wavelengths. Mitu Toyo is not the only company that makes apochromatic objectives. They're just the only company that makes enough of them to be able to sell them at this price to where we can afford to buy them. Let me, let me take a brief detour to talk about Mitu Toyo. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna talk long. It's a Japanese company, right? And they're not primarily a microscope maker or a microscope objective maker, though they do make them. 
The Mitu Toyo makes these as kind of like a side thing for them. They're a metrology company, primarily. Mitu Toyo makes microscope objectives the same way that your Auntie Polly makes tea cozies to sell on Facebook. Uh, only they're microscope objectives and they don't fall apart like your Aunt Polly's tea cozies. This company actually makes a whole line of metrology stuff and they are so uh, prestigious and um, they've been around for such a long time that they actually have one of the world's leading metrology institutes in Japan, um, which before you, before you go and see whether or not your local weatherman on Channel 6 went to the Mitutoyo Institute to learn his metrology, that's meteorology. This is measurement. This, they go to school there to measure things. It seems like overkill to me. It seems like a decent community college could do that in a course. Different kinds of rulers, calipers, lasers. Yeah, just one course is all you need. You don't need a whole institute. There's one other characteristic of this lens that makes it uh, not exactly unique, but unique in this, in this price range and that is the working distance. This 5X objective has a working distance of 34 millimeters. 34 millimeters is a huge distance between the end of the objective and your specimen. You can put literally any kind of creative lighting that you can think of into that space. If you've ever worked with the uh, 10X CFI plan uh, objective uh, from Nikon, you're working with 10 and a half millimeters, which isn't nothing, but boy, it's hard to get light in there. It's hard to get light directed exactly where you want it. With three times that or three and a half times that, it's night and day. It is a completely different deal. I am really excited because I'm going to be getting a 20 times objective from light glass optics in the near future to do some testing on. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And that also is a long working distance objective. If this lens had nothing else going for it, that long working distance would sell it for me. Sorry about that. I just had to uh, uh, run outside to see what the um, terrible noise was coming through that wall. That wall connects to my washing area, my washing machine and dryer. Um, and it was making just a terrible noise that I'd never heard it made before. But at least I found my book. You've heard me cry about these lenses a lot because to me, they're very expensive. They're hundreds and hundreds of dollars. But you need to understand that these are about the cheapest lenses of their type in the world. And it's one of the reasons that they are so incredibly popular with photographers is not only are they extremely good, but they're extremely inexpensive. And why is that? So these things can be so affordable and the, the five actually costs retail 720 bucks or, or close to that 740. Light glass optics is selling them for 400 and something and whatever it is, it's about half price and it's insanely good deal for a brand new lens. But let me, let me tell you how I think about the price of these lenses. They are as good as any camera lens that I own. And I have some camera lenses that cost two grand. Now, they're great lenses and I love them and they do all the things a great lens is supposed to do, but they don't do macro. And there is no comparison between this and the macro lens. Even my best macro lens has more chromatic aberration than, than this does. And this is half the price or a third of the price at light glass. So you've got to compare apples to apples. And for the quality of the imaging you're getting with this, there is not much out there that can compare to it. And at the price, nothing. So 
when you're thinking about this, compare the price of this to the other long working distance apochromatic objectives, and you will see that they are $3,000, $7,000, $13,000 for, for the same lens, basically, as this. So that makes these the, the, only, the only way to go. They really are that good. I'm not exaggerating. What kind of lens is so good that they that the top is made of a block of solid brass? I think it is. It's metal. A big this thing weighs half a pound. And this thing screws into it, presumably so that. Nothing bad happens to the threads. I don't know why this thing's made of metal. I should have looked that up. So impressive. Okay, so what do they use them for? They have a whole line of these things. Uh, they have the, the BD that I told you about, the bright dark field. They have an SL version, which is used with looking when you're looking through glass. They have them for lasers, infrared, ultraviolet. I told you about them. And they are all more expensive than this. And some of them are a lot more expensive than this. Even the M plan, when you get up into the 50 and 100 times uh, uh, magnification, these things are in the thousands of dollars. But the 5 and the 10 are both under 1,000. The 7.5 is over 1,000. Don't know why. Must be hard to make. Uh, so, when you actually look at what you're buying for the money, these things are a steal. For those of us who aren't actually in industry and uh, you know we don't know anything about the metrology world, I have a pair of calipers. They cost ten dollars and they work fine for me. But for people who actually need them, like people who build spaceships. They need to know whether it's an inch or an inch and a half, that sprocket they just put on the, the rocket. So they need accurate measuring tools. And if you look up Mitutoyo forgery, you'll see that it is a massive problem that a lot of the measuring equipment, because measuring equipment is expensive, for it to, to be accurate and the best, it's expensive. And Mitu Toyo's calipers and measuring doodads and the screwy thing that close, yeah, I don't know what they're called either. I, I watched a video on it on YouTube. Didn't, it just went over my head. I didn't soak it in. What's it called? A venereal caliper. Does that sound right? What's that thing with the the screw looks like a question mark that has a screw on the end for measuring the thickness of things. A thicknessometer. They make all of that stuff and it's all expensive. Uh, and it's being forged by Chinese companies that are making knockoff versions that look very, very similar. And they're putting them in a very similar Mitu Toyo box and they're putting them on eBay and people are buying them because. If you can get a Mitu Toyo caliper, instead of having to pay $180 for it, you can get it for $65. A lot of people are buying them, only to discover that they're not, of course, Mitu Toyo, they're cheap copies. Now, it turns out that there are plenty of forged or counterfeit Mitu Toyo objectives banging around, and they also are made in China. But it is incredibly difficult to get any good, solid information on it. I called several of the Mitu Toyo offices in the US and never got called back. I wrote to the folks in Japan and never heard back. Um, they apparently have a reputation for not being uh, easy to get in touch with for anything. Uh, so. I don't know how big a problem it is. I do know that they, they think it's a big enough problem that they have a big notice on their website warning people about forgeries. But it raises some interesting questions. How do you forge an apochromatic lens? Uh, presumably, the forgery has to pass some level of, of scrutiny. 
Well, I had an interesting experience with this. My friend Glenn sent me one of his Mitutoyo five times objectives. Now he had bought his uh, from a reseller uh, in the East, I think from China. And uh, I had it here for um, a couple of months and did a lot of photography with it. And generally speaking, uh, was quite impressed with its performance. It had a lot of cosmetic damage to it. It, it looked like it had been used in some kind of throwing sport uh, at some point. And the front of the lens was pitted with, with marks. It turns out a lot of these are put in operations where they're using lasers or, or um, welders to fix things together. And these objectives are looking at the process from you know, 34 millimeters away. And companies who have these assembly lines making these expensive electronic tools will buy these by the thousands, use them for a week or two, and, and then sell them to a surplus company because they're no longer, they're no longer up to the, the uh, level they require for whatever it is they're doing with them. That's why there are so many of these legitimate, real mitutoyos on the used market. But it's also why a lot of them are in bad shape and some of them are unusable. So we really have two problems. We, or three kinds of Mitutoyo objectives. We have legitimate, real, brand new Mitutoyo objectives. Now to buy them, you have to go to Light Glass Optics, or you could also go to Thor Labs or uh, Edmunds. All of these places will have them. Only, of course, one of them will have them for $400, and that's Light, light Glass. Um, but the other places will have them, and you will know that you're getting the real deal. Now, the one that I had, uh, Glenn's objective, looked and felt like the real deal to me, but its markings were different. And you would think that if, if a company was going to change the way it marked the information on a microscope objective, they wouldn't change the format. They would put the same information in roughly the same place. They might change the font or something. And I was, to be honest, pretty sure that it was a, a counterfeit objective. But I didn't have anything to go on other than the fact that I, when I went on eBay, all the ones that looked like his were for going for $300 from some Chinese seller. Uh, and they all looked the same. And some of them had the same serial number. So... I kind of got it in my head that this must be a forgery, but it was actually a very sharp lens. It wasn't nearly as bright as the new one. But then again, this new one hasn't been used in a welding thing for three weeks. I, tr I had tried to get in touch with Mitutoyo to get from them information. Are these markings legitimate? for one of your older objectives. Did you used to have these markings on your objectives? And I haven't heard a squeak out of them. Um, so I started doing some research elsewhere and I went to the resources that I always go to when I wanna know something about microscope objectives. I check out Close Up Photography uh, by uh, Robert O'Toole, his website. He's, he's the, the guy that knows it all. Um, and he did not make any reference to the older one. And the other place I checked out was over on uh, photo macrography, which is um, Rick Littlefield of Zerine Stacker, uh, the, the uh, forum that he started. It's wonderful. It's, it's the place to go where, where all the eggheads hang out to talk about this kind of stuff. It's a wonderful site. The boards there are very, very interesting. Lots of great stuff they talk about. It's like our Discord, only serious. Yeah. <laughs> Something along those lines. But anyway, I came across a thread where one of the, one of the um, commenters was talking about having purchased one of the old Mitutoyo 
that it was either five or 10x objective. And as I read the thread, it became clear to me that at least some of the people on the thread thought that those older markings were actually legitimate, older, but real Metutoyos. I don't know. My gut tells me that they wouldn't change the, the markings the way they did. I think it really comes down to just plain common sense. If you want to buy the best macro photography lens in the world, plan on spending the full $450 for it. Don't save $150 and take a chance that you're getting something from somewhere else. I'll tell you this, I would not buy an objective that didn't have the markings of the current uh, new objectives that Mitu Toyo is distributing. I wouldn't do that because I don't know if they're any good. No sooner had I finished admonishing you against buying a Mitu Toyo objective with these older markings, I spoke with Mr. Jeff McDowell at Light Glass Optics and he pointed out to me that no, these markings were consistent with earlier Mitu Toyo objectives. That doesn't mean that an objective with these markings is genuine. It also doesn't mean that it's a fake. Mr. McDowell uh, assures me that these uh, objectives are available in a variety of different markings and it is very common for him to see these different markings. So common, in fact, that he sent me a 20 times objective that has the same older branding on the barrel. This is a genuine Mitutoyo objective, of that there can be no doubt. Therefore, I would like to withdraw my comment and advice about not purchasing objectives with these markings. I do, however, stand behind my advice that you get your objective from a reputable dealer, somebody who will take the objective back again if you don't think it's real when you get it. And there is no more reputable dealer than Jeff McDowell of Light Glass Optics. Check the show notes and you'll find a link for his store there. Buy one, don't drop it. Don't fall or drop it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again in a few days. Please stay safe and be well. And uh, it was actually two books. They don't wash well. Books don't wash well. Just dust them off. Don't wash them. The instructions on the washing machine say to do different colors separately. Is that also true for shoes?